Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from ezraautomation.com and welcome to my new playlist in our Ezra Automation YouTube channel on building event-driven microservices in c .net. This particular video and in fact this whole playlist is part of my Udemy course event-driven microservice develop and test with c .net is where we have discussed this whole application development. Well, as you can see in this particular course, I have talked about how you can build an event-driven microservices, starting building the event-driven microservices for the API service, and also building the service broker with RabbitMQ, front-end, and dockerizing the microservices. And then how do we test a complete complex architecture-based application, something like this, for UI, API, and integration tests, and also run them in the Docker container. So that is what is this particular course is all about. But the one that we are going to be discussing about is going to be these first three sections, because this is the place where you will be ending up developing the whole application itself. And I really wanted to make everyone to understand how to build a robust, simple, event-driven based microservice application using c .net. And that's the reason why this particular playlist really exists. As you can see, our application is going to have a front end, which is nothing but the customer portal. It's also going to have an EDA underscore customer, EDA underscore inventory, inventory portal. Well, this EDA underscore customer is going to be the event driven architecture based customer API, which will be built using ASP.NET Web API project. And this API project is going to listen the RabbitMQ message broker and also publishing the message to the RabbitMQ message broker. And the same thing applies for the EDA inventory project as well. And these two API projects are going to be accessed by the inventory portal and the customer portal respectively. And because we are going to be using some of the shared library, we have created a shared project, which is going to be calling the RabbitMQ as well as some of the settings related to the RabbitMQ. So this is how the application is going to look like at the end of the application development. And these are related to the testing part, which we will talk while we start developing the test cases of our application, like API, UI, and the integration tests. In order to run this application, we can run this completely in the Docker container because as you can see over here, we have the Docker Compose file which is responsible for running the whole application in the Docker container itself. So let me run this application in the Docker container. So I'm just going to do Docker Compose build parallel and Docker Compose up to start the whole application. As you can see, while the application invokes, it is going to start the RabbitMQ service broker and once the service broker is up, then all the services will be up and running. And we can access the application using the port localhost 8000 for the EDA customer API and localhost 5001 for EDA inventory service. And then there are two portals. One is the inventory portal and another one is the customer portal. And the one that we are building in this particular section is the EDA customer and the EDA inventory, which will be discussing how these services are going to be built. But as you can see, this application is quite straightforward. All it's going to do is it is going to have an inventory portal, which is going to create the products. And these products are going to be served to the customer in the customer portal so that the customer can choose the product and they can purchase the product from here. So every time customer purchase the product which is being served from the inventory portal, the total number of product, if it is reduced, will be updated immediately in the inventory portal with the help of the RabbitMQ publisher and subscription model. So as you can see, if I go create a product, for example, keyboard over here, and if I want to create the keyboard of 200, you will notice that it is going to create a product for me, something like this. So it's going to show me the list of all the products over here. And similarly, I can choose, I can create another product over here, and I can have them like 900 of them, and you get another mouse product over here. And immediately you can see in the customer portal, if I do the products over here, you can see the list of all the products that are going to come in. And this is happening because I have my RabbitMQ service broker up and running. And you can see for this particular inventory.product queue, I can see that the product being created messages are being spiked up over here. And now as a customer, if I just go to the customer portal and if purchase a product, for example, as Karthik, and if I purchase keyboard, you will notice that I get both these products coming up in my dropdown, just the product which I already have within my products list. And now I can purchase a product using keyboard of 100. So remaining will be 100 because we already know that there are 200 keyboards. So once I do a submit, and if I go back to the inventory portal, and if I refresh the page right now, you will notice that I have just 100 keyboards remaining. 
And this is happening once again because the customer portal is calling the EDA customer API which is then going to post a product being purchased from the customer and also publishes a message in the RabbitMQ inventory.customer topic something like this and you can see there is a spike being happened and this is how the application is built from the event driven architecture so that every time any event happens the interested subscriber is going to subscribe the message and the publisher is going to publish the event in the RabbitMQ message broker. Well, now that we are going to start developing this whole source code that we just saw as a demo to see how we could able to build everything from the complete ground up. In order to do that, we first of all need to understand the architecture even more clearer in the design perspective. So as you can see within our event driven architecture system, we do have a customer service API which is a web API project. And it also has a database. A database can be a SQL Server database or a NoSQL database or a simple SQLite database. You can choose whatever database that you wanted. But I'm gonna choose for the simplicity purpose so that we can run this application in a more easier container fashion. I'm gonna use the SQLite for now because the database itself is super light. So I'm gonna use that, but you can use whatever database that you wanted to. And then we also need to develop and customer portal, which is gonna consume this API, which is the customer service API. And the same thing is gonna happen even for the inventory service as a web API project with a database in it. And also there should be an inventory portal. So essentially we are gonna be developing almost like a four project in one solution, which are gonna perform these operations. And because they are gonna be using the RabbitMQ streaming platform or a streaming service, we also need to somehow make a shared project, like as you can see here, which is gonna do the exact same thing like consumption of the data from the uh, streaming platform, which is via topic and listening to the topic and then running the background service to ensure that everything runs fine or not. So I have not talked about the background service and things of that nature. While we go and design things, you'll realize that the background service is a place where it's gonna keep poking if there is any topic which is requires is available in the event streaming topic or not. So all those things we are going to be developing later point of time. But for now, as you can see, this is where we are going to start designing how we are going to develop things. So the first thing, as I told you, is going to be the customer service API that we need to first design. So I'm not going to touch this particular project that we are seeing over here. Rather, we're going to build everything from the scratch. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project which is going to be a web API project uh, and I'm going to choose the .NET 6 for now even the .NET 7 has been released I'm just going to stick with .NET 6 uh, because it's still LTS so it's safe to use that for now and I'm going to give a name of this service and I'm going to call this as EDA customer pretty much the same name that you can see in here and then I'm going to create it into a specific folder. And then I'm going to choose the type as an web API project. And then I'm going to leave all these things as it is and create a project. And once we have this, you can see that there are some template codes in here, like the controllers. And there is also a program.cs files and stuff. So because we're not going to use this uh, web forecast.cs, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it because it's not required. And also we don't require the weather forecast controller. So I'm going to remove them slowly. But for now, let it be over here. And the first thing is for the customer portal, we require a customer model. And also we require a product model because this is where I'm gonna create some customer. And also I'm going to read the data from the topic and store into the product model. So we need two models over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder here and I'm gonna call this as data. And in this data, I'm going to create two class files. And one class file is going to be customer, which is nothing but a model. And then I'm also going to create another class file and I'm going to call this as product. And once we have these two things, then I can start creating the customer details over here. So the customer details are going to be nothing but it's going to have name and ID and a product ID as well as the items in the carts, something like this. So these are the things that you require for the customer model. And for the product models, I require pretty much exactly the same thing, except that it is gonna have a product name in it and the quantity of the product that is gonna be available 
from the products topic and again i'm talking about the topics here we'll be using this later on but for now let it be over here and you'll understand what i really mean so at the moment you can see that we have two models here one is a customer model another one is the product model and then i'm gonna be creating a db context here which can then be used to access the data from the database so i'm going to create a class file i'm going to call this as customer db context while it's happening i also need to go ahead and install the entity framework over here so i'm going to call entity framework which is the version 7 during the time of recording so i'm going to do an install that and once it is done i can then start doing the db context hit control dot to add the missing references and then i'm going to add a default constructor over here because that is required for me and i also require the db context by passing the customer db context on the base class so let me also do that so over here and then i'm going to pass the db context options of the db context options and let me also pass that to the base over here so base of the db context uh, and once these are there i also need to create the two database into the model which is nothing but the customer database and i also need to create the product database so for some reason the intelligence is not quite right so i'm gonna say product so these are the two databases that I really wanted to create. So now we have everything over here. The next operation is the controllers, which is going to be used by the UI to create a customer, also to fetch the details related to the product, which we'll be doing in our next lecture.